Hello. It's so nice to see all your smiley faces. Today I've got something very special for you. Some actual consumer advice. Wow! For once in this channel. <laughs> With the UK and much of the world increasing the ethanol content in fuel, the UK going from E5 to E10 in 2021, the US from E10 to E15, it was only a matter of time for the pro-ethanol and anti-ethanol crowds to kiss their wives goodbye, brandish their keyboards and go to battle. Yo! For those of you new to the subject, the number in E5, for example, denotes the ethanol content in the fuel. Well, duh. E0 having 0% ethanol in it and therefore 100% petrol or gas. What's up with the word gas, by the way? Who went, oh, I know. Let's call this liquid a gas. That won't confuse people. Now I'm making a conscious effort to make this video as short as possible. So I will sidestep making a lecture on ethanol as there are so many dangerous generalizations from both sides on it. And I want to do it justice and treat the subject in its separate video. So for the purpose of this video, I'll make the assumption that you have genuine concerns about ethanol for your body bike or car or boat or motorized bicycle or mobility scooter you get the point it's clearly labeled to not take more than e5 e10 or nothing other than e0 your fuel system or tank is clearly not taken kindly to ethanol and keeps bubbling and expanding or you simply want the best mileage and performance out of your fuel and therefore want the least amount of ethanol in your petrol due to its lower energy content if you fit in any of these categories then you're probably like me and wondering what fuel station offers petrol with the least amount of ethanol in it or no ethanol. You see the E5 or E10 labels you see on pumps are a maximum amount allowed in that pump, not a target. An E10 pump might only contain 2% ethanol, 5% or 10 but never over 10. I've wanted to do this for a long time and never really bothered till I realized that this might be very useful to some of you. So I went out to six different petrol stations and got a sample of their best but easily found fuel. Tesco with their E599 Octane Momentum 99, Texaco with their E597 Octane Supreme 97, BP with their E597 Octane BP Ultimate, Shell with their E599 Octane V, Power! Sainsbury's with their E597 Super and Esso with their E597 Synergy Supreme Plus. All these fuels are advertised as E5, but what actual ethanol content is in them? To test this, we will use one of ethanol's properties against it. You see, ethanol is hygroscopic, which means it will easily mix with water. So by introducing some water into fuel and giving it a good shake, most of the ethanol will go into phase separation and mix with the water, which will settle in the bottom due to its weight, allowing us to calculate how much ethanol was in the fuel. With that said, make your predictions. Which brand do you think will have the full fat 5%? And which do you think won't have any? The results might surprise you. I'm going full Daily Mail. So here we've got all our fuels in the flesh. This is the BP Ultimate, Texaco Supreme, Esso Synergy Supreme Plus, Sainsbury Super, Tesco Momentum 99 and Shell V Power. The first thing you notice is the difference in colours. I hope it comes across on the camera but on one end you have the BP fuel which could literally be mistaken for water. It is that clear and colourless. At the other end of the spectrum is the Shell fuel which has this strong yellow green hue to it. And in between are these different shades of yellow. Texaco and Esso look identical and so do Sainsbury's and Tesco which makes you think. But anyway this is not a colour test it's just always interesting to see that what you'd think is the same premium fuel does visually look slightly different from one place to the other. There's clearly different compositions and additives in the fuel or at the very least different dyes used. So the process for each fuel went like this. Add 10 milliliters of water, add 60 milliliters of the fuel to be tested, be a clumsy idiot and almost set the lab on fire, give it a good shake for about a minute, let settle for 10 minutes, make note of where the water is, clean and repeat. Any excess of water over the original 10 milliliter is ethanol. So if the level rises to 13 milliliter for example that means 3 milliliter above the original 10 milliliter and therefore 3 mil divided by 60 mil of fuel gives us 5% ethanol in the fuel. And these were the results. There was actually no or at least undiscernible amounts of ethanol in BP, SO, Texas 
Mexico and Sainsbury's. The water level stayed at the 10 milliliter mark. However, interestingly, the Tesco Momentum and Shell V Power both increased their water level by one milliliter to 11 milliliter, which translates to 1.66% ethanol content. Now you notice that all the 97 fuels have had no, or at least undiscernible amounts of ethanol in them, while the 99 octane fuels, Tesco Momentum, and Shell V Power have had about 1.66% of ethanol in them. Now correlation doesn't always mean causation, but in this case, it is a very sound theory that one is definitely causing the other. You see, ethanol has a very high octane rating of about 120. So what fuel brands do to reach those high 99 or 100 octane ratings is simply mix some ethanol with their premium fuel. And voila, if you're concerned about ethanol, sticking with super is probably a good bet. We also confirmed that E5 does not necessarily mean the full fat 5%. If you want to make your own ethanol-free fuel, then the method I've shown is not a bad way to go about it. If you can make a container or a bottle with the tap at the bottom of it, you can do all the mixing there, and then once phase separation is finished, you can just open the tap, let the water ethanol mix out, and job done. Two words of caution, however. There will still be some ethanol residue in the fuel, and most importantly, the fuel will have lost a lot of its resistance to knock. So it is best to use an octane booster, ideally one that's not made of ethanol, hopefully for obvious reasons. An important disclaimer I need to make here, the results found here are representatives of the batches I got from those specific fuel stations in that particular day. Blends and therefore ethanol content, although unlikely, can change from one day to the other, and very likely from one region to the other. Take this test as early guidance and baseline for what fuels are like. While it won't be massively different around the southeast of England, it might be a completely different story in Scotland or Devon or whatever. Make your own test or buy ethanol-free fuel from specialist companies if you're very concerned. If you found this video video helpful then you know what you need to do and make sure to share this with a friend who'd benefit from seeing this in the meantime why not watch another one another one another one another one another one another one